All right, welcome to Christian Overcomers, and thank you for joining us for this Bible study. New Moon Days. Last study we documented that moons equal biblical months. And that's pretty easy to do. All one has to do is get out their Strong's Concordance and look up the word month, as well as the word new moon. And you find out that it's the same Hebrew word for, for both of those words. And you find out that that word is Strong's word 2320, and it's pronounced Kodesh. It's from 2318, meaning the new moon, or by implication, a month. And it has been translated, as you see there, both as a, the word month, as well as the new moon. Notice it didn't say there that um, Kodesh meant um, a month, but by implication, a new moon. It didn't say that at all. And the reason being is that the ancient Hebrew calendar, as well as many other ancient uh, calendars and other civilizations, simply went by the moon, from one new moon to the next to determine their months. It, it's, the easiest, it's the easiest sign that man can go by. A farmer out in his field can look up the, the night before and know what tomorrow is. Because he can see what phase, what phase the moon is in. What, what that signal is that Almighty God is giving us. As Genesis 1 verse 14 declares that God would, would give us the calendar in the heavens. And the moon just happens to be the minute hand. And without it, you wouldn't be able to tell time. You wouldn't be able to tell time accurately. Um, because... It's just the same as if you ripped off the minute hand off of your clock today. You may kind of know what the hour is, but you don't, you don't really know what, you know what minute it is. And again, it's the same with God's calendar. The moon is like the minute hand and the sun the hour hand. So you can't just have one or the other. It doesn't work that way. And um, by the end of this study, I'm going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt for those people who, who try to believe in a solar-only calendar that even, by the way, stemmed uh, most likely from the pagan Egyptian calendar. I'm going to prove that, I'm going to prove them wrong when they say that whenever the word Kodesh is used, it has been mistranslated into the King James Bible as well as virtually every other version of the Bible. As, um, as, as the word uh, new moon. In other words, whenever they see the word new moon there, the solar only people who seem to like to, in this case anyways, add to and take away from God's word, say that whenever new moon is mentioned, it's a, it's a faulty translation. They really screwed up big time and it should only mean month or a period of time. Yet they cannot define what that time period is in God's word and, um, and so forth. But I'm going to prove that, that to be wrong by the end of this study. So don't miss out on any of this study. Um, basically, in other words, when you look at the moon, um, one complete lunation from a dark moon or a new moon, and we're going to go into this in the, in the study, from the dark moon as it lights up, as it waxes, and then as it wanes, all the way back to a dark moon, is one complete biblical month. It's that simple. But today we're going to get into that a little further, and we're going to find out that those dark periods where the moon is just dark, are actually days within themselves. They're called new moon days on God's calendar. I know many people, most Bible students, um, when reading the scriptures, they come across all these scriptures, uh, some of which we're going to cover today, where it mentions the new moon, and they kind of just gloss over it. They say, well, well, what's that? And they don't even really think twice about it. I was one of those. I was one of those. I just, I didn't know what new moons were. I just, I don't know. I don't even know why I didn't look into it. I suppose it wasn't time for me to really understand at that time. But you know, there are a lot of scriptures that mention the new moon days. 
And um, we're going to get into that here today. Well, first, let's look at some of these here. Um, 1 Samuel 20, verse 5 is a place where the new moon, new moon days are mentioned. And we're going to list off a bunch of them here. So bear with me. And I think we'll make the slide available on our website as well. If you just click on uh, our newest video study page, we're going to try and add a lot of slides, a lot of the slides we put in our videos on that page, on that page in case there's um, a slide you want to go back and analyze a little closer. So we find it find new new moon days mentioned in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 5. 1 Samuel 20 verse 18. 1 Samuel 20 verse 24. 2 Kings 4 verse 23. 1 Chronicles 23 31. 2 Chronicles 2 verse 4. 2 Chronicles 8 verse 13. 2 Chronicles 31 verse 3. Ezra 3 verse 5. Nehemiah 10 verse 33. Isaiah 1 13. Isaiah 1 14. Isaiah 66 23. Ezekiel 45 verse 7. Ezekiel 46 verse 3. Hosea 2 verse 11, Amos 8 verse 5, and Colossians 2 verse 16. And you know what? These times here, the, all these scriptures I have listed here, are only actually uh, the days that the King James translators have translated the word Kodesh into the English words new moon. But there are hundreds of other verses in the Bible where the word Kodesh is used. And it has been translated as months. But it's the same meaning. It's the same meaning from new moon to new moon. As the slide there says, the word month, Kodesh, means new moon. And here on this slide um, is an alignment. This this alignment here is a full, this would be the this would look like a full moon to us on the Earth, with the moon all the way on the other side of the Earth, and then um, the Earth in the middle there, and then the Sun on the far side. Now, during our last study, I uh, made a mistake by saying that this was actually the astronomical new moon alignment, that this was that conjunction. Well, guess what? I made a mistake there, and that's, that's why I said, that's why I always say, hey, you gotta, you gotta do your own homework. You can't just believe what I say. Because sometimes I make a slip of the tongue, or um, I just, sometimes I'll just blow it. And that's why you can't just put your trust in man. You must, uh, you know, use, you know, use man as a tool, and as a, as a helper, but always make sure you do your own thinking, your own research, uh, um, so, that you, uh, so that you don't make mistakes, so that you don't follow other people's mistakes. So I made that mistake the last time. I, uh, I guess I just wasn't really thinking about it when I put that slide up. But here is what an astronomical new moon looks like from the heavens, from the heavenly standpoint. You have the um, you have the Earth there, and then the Moon actually comes in between, in between the um, in between the Sun and the Earth there, and that's how you have it. And there, there you see you even see a shadow there, um, dark shadow towards the on the Earth side there. That's what we see because the Sun is actually lighting up the back side of the Moon, but we don't get to see that. We only see the dark side. And during this conjunction, um, this, is when, uh, this is when you'd have uh, solar eclipses. Because, um, you know, notice it doesn't happen all the time because the moon isn't always directly between. During an astronomical new moon, the new moon is not always directly between 
the, uh, the um, I should say, uh, the uh, Earth and the Sun. And uh, we'll get into eclipses later, solar eclipses later, but uh, that, this, this is when solar eclipses occur are on astronomical new moons. Um, there is a debate about whether or not the new moon is the first, uh, the first little sliver of light that can be seen, etc. But I'm not going to get into that today. Um, perhaps we'll get into the details of those later on. For many of you, you're just studying this calendar for the first time. So we don't really have to get into uh, some of those details or, you know, it just might bog you down with too many details. But the long and short of it is that the reason the astronomical new moon, the, the reason I believe the astronomical new moon must be the true new moon day is because, for one, it's in perfect alignment. It's in a set time or, or meeting at a set, in, at a set pattern there, three in a row there. But also because if it was on any other day, then the full moon that we're going to talk about later on that would mark the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, as well as uh, the Feast of Tabernacles um, would, would, uh, would not be lining up quite right there. But anyways, when you look at this, um, look at this alignment here, this is a very important alignment in the heavens or from our standpoint on earth even because the entire calendar revolves around this conjunction. This is one of the major appointed times from month to month to month. It, in fact, without this conjunction here, you would not be able to determine months, Sabbaths even, the feast days, as well as New Year's Day, according to God's calendar. So this is, a, this is an important conjunction, and that's why I put it on the screen there. Um, let's move on. And uh, I got a verse up here. This, is, this verse is very important. I'm going to read it here. It's from Isaiah 66, verse 23. And it says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Isaiah, again, Isaiah 66, verse 23. From one new moon to another. We'll, we'll talk about that verse a little later on. But here we go. Here's a, a um, little diagram here for us to, to help us understand uh, where the moon is on uh, certain of these different phases. And um, first of all, we'll recap the new moon. There you see it in between the sun and the earth. That is a new moon for us on earth. And then we move over to what a full moon looks like. Now a full moon will be way on the other side of the earth. You see it just keeps going around in a circle, round and around and around. That's the moon is the Earth's satellite. It's, it's again, the minute hand on Yahweh's clock. His, it's his timepiece. All right. I'm just going to give you a quick view of what we're going to be building in the, um, in the coming studies here. This here. Um, I got the pointer over there pointed towards uh, the new moon day. But this here is what a biblical month looks like. Starting out with new moon day as day number one. And uh, just to let you know though, these, these lunar signs actually happen the evening or the night before the actual day. So, um, so there we have it. That's just a quick glimpse. We're going to build off of this. And all of these months look the same every single month, with the exception of a, a 30th day added on some months, or uh, basically every other month, because of the um, lunar months are 29.5 days, approximately. So in other words, this, what we're going to do here is we're going to start building the calendar. 
And uh, we're going to find out this is going to be our foundation, the biblical month. What are new moon days? Well, before we get into that, I think we ought to open in prayer here. Um, before we get, because we're going to get into a bunch of scriptures concerning new moon days. Um, and that's really going to start our study here. So let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just pray for wisdom and understanding in your word. Help us as we study the scriptures in relation to the new moon days that you can open our eyes, open our ears to your truth. And we want to thank you as we're going to find out in this study that your new moon days are a gift, just like the Sabbath was to mankind, to your people, to your children. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get into the scriptures here. First verse we're going to go to is Isaiah 66, verse 23. And, and we uh, I believe we just read that there. But we're going to go to our Bibles, Isaiah 66, verse 23, and it reads, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Now notice that there it says, um, it says that God's people, will come before him from one from on the new moon days from on the new, uh, one new moon day to another they're going to come and worship on those days and from one sabbath to another you see what we're getting here we're starting to get the calendar an outline of the calendar new moon to new moon and sabbath to sabbath fascinating um, let's move on to uh, let's turn over to Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 and it reads thus saith the Lord God the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east now we're talking about the Millennium Sanctuary here but this this verse does give us a give us some insight on uh, the, the calendar we have today now it, it still works the calendar in the um, Millennium Sanctuary Millennial Sanctuary is still based off of the biblical calendar, still based off of God's law. And as we're going to find out, but we're going here so that we can see something very special. Ezekiel 46, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut. Now check this out. Six working days. Underline that. But on the Sabbath it shall be open. So the gate of this court, of the inner court, uh, that looks toward the east is supposed to be shut on working days. But on the Sabbath, it's open on the seventh day. But you check this out. And in the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. What, what's going on there? You know, again, this is one of those places where many of us have, have read over. It says, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. Well, the new moon isn't a working day then. And it's not a Sabbath. So what is it? Well, it's a new moon day. You know, it's hard for us to get, to get deprogrammed to this idea that all, the only thing that constitutes God's calendar is six on, one off. Which everybody, a lot of people think the Sabbath is Saturday or Sunday. And they have this idea that this, the, God's calendar revolves around and around like the pagan Gregorian calendar does. But it doesn't. God resets it with a new moon day. Every new month sets, uh, breaks up um, or sets forth a new uh, series of, Sabbath, of working weeks and Sabbath weeks. Um, so these are three different kinds of days. Again, there are working days, there are Sabbath days, and there are new moon days in God's calendar, as well as, we haven't got into it yet, but feast days. But these are your basic monthly, monthly days. Besides, again, besides the feast days, uh, uh, the seven feasts, the Passover, unleavened bread, 
and uh, Tabernacles, Pentecost, you name it. All right. So again, here's what, here's what the calendar looks like, the monthly calendar anyways. And this is where we need to start building from. New Moon Day is always the first day of the month. It resets, it resets the clock, so to speak. And then, there we go, got it up on, the, on there for you, labeled there. And then here we have the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, the 29th of every month. Not the Gregorian calendar, by the way. God's calendar, the, the lunar calendar here, loony solar uh, to be more exact. These are your weekly Sabbaths, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. On the first quarter moon, on the full moon, on the third quarter, and on the last silver. And uh, again, from month to month, we're not going to get into the, to the particulars in this study. This will vary just a tiny bit. And here are your work days. Fascinating. Four weeks, four, sat, four working weeks, four Sabbaths in each month, and a new moon day. And, but we're not going to get into it in depth today. Well, we'll talk about it a little bit today anyways. Every other month had a 30th day added on, which was a new moon day, a feast day, but it was not considered the first day of the month. It would have been the the second new moon day, if that were the case, would be the New Year's Day. Again, we're not going to get into too many particulars today, but this is the general breakdown. Pretty simple. And it's all evenly distributed by God's timepiece, as he stated in Psalms 104, verse 19, that the moon was appointed for all of the set times, the Sabbaths, the feast days, the high holy days, etc. All right, so let's turn back there to Ezekiel 46, verse 1. And uh, there you see it. Um, six working days, Sabbath, and new moon, and it shall be open. Now, when you look at that, how do we know these are separate days? Again, because the gate cannot be opened on a working day. Therefore, a new moon day is a separate category of days because the gate is opened on that day. And um, that's the problem many people have today is realizing there's a, a, uh, another set there. Ezekiel 46, verse 2. And the prince shall enter by way of the porch that, uh, of that gate without, and he shall stand by the post of that gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then shall he go forth, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. Now, I, a thought just came to my mind here. Notice it's, it's talking about new moon days in reference to the gates and the Sabbath and so forth. A lot of people mention that the, that the sun is going to shine into the temple and tell us, um, tell us the, uh, the solar calendar. But it doesn't, there's no mention whatsoever of the sun shining into the temple here. It only mentions new moon days. Think about that. Ezekiel 46, verse 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbath and in the new moons. So what are new moon days? What have we gleaned, gleaned this far? Well, new moon days are worship days. We know, that, we know that from the scriptures we've read now. A separate category. They're not Sabbaths, but they still are worship days. In other words, they don't carry forth some of the uh, stricter regulations uh, for rest. So... New moon days are kind of a, a fascinating day, kind of a fun day. Let's turn over to Amos chapter 8, verse 4 now. And it reads, Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. Okay, talking about those who are, those who are greedy, those who are trying to rip people off. 
Verse 5, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. Now, I don't even have to mention uh, to many of you who this verse is referring to, in large part referring to the Federal Reserve System that falsifies the balances of our currency by inflation, by making the dollar, the dollar that you had in your bank account now worth less because they keep tipping the scale. They keep tipping the scale by pumping more money in and it just goes like that. And yours becomes less. Um, so what does it say here? There are evil, greedy people here back in the back in during these times that were waiting for the new moon to be gone, as well as the Sabbath, so that they could so that they could start ripping the people off again, so they could sell their goods. But you know what that says there it gives us another clue about what new moon days are. They are non-commerce days. Non business or trade days. Now you could probably do work around your house and things like that that uh, the Sabbath sort of prohibited. Uh, you could light fires, campfires and, and things like that and cook, cook big meals, have a feast. But um, you, th this was a non-working day so to speak. Um, but something else uh, for, for you deeper students that are really uh, starting to catch on to some of this stuff here. Notice it says when the people are saying, these con artists are saying, when will the new moon be gone? Now, this definitely looks forward to, you know, when they want, um, uh, I'll just say it this way. It is possible that this scripture could mean that, you know, because sometimes there are two new moon days in each month, that perhaps these people here, thinking about that, are not sure if it's going to be a, a, a month with one new moon or two new moons. And they just want to get back to business. They just want to get back to business. They, they prefer to hurry up and get, to, get the new moon day over with so that they can keep ripping people off. And we're speaking of the Kenites here primarily. All right there, there is new moon day. It's the first day of the month, and here's what I was talking about. Sometimes there, um, basically it's about every other month that there is a uh, second new moon day when the moon is dark. And that, that counts as day number 30 if there are two of them. All right. Let's turn over to 1 Samuel 20, verse 18. We're going to keep reading about these new moons here. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon. Again, how many of you have really stopped to think about what this is, what he's saying here? Tomorrow is the new moon. Well, he says, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. Now, what we're going to read about here, and we're just going to skip through some of the verses about it. This was the time when Saul wanted to kill David. And Jonathan was trying to come up with a plan to hide David, to save David. So that his father, Saul, would not kill David. And he's, Jonathan says to David, Hey, tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty. Now this, this tells us a lot about what happened on new moon days. One thing right off the bat is that that people are able by um, observing the days before the, the astronomical new moon they are able to determine again by observation when the new moon will be. For one it will always happen after the, the 29th of, after the last uh, Sabbath of the month then you know tomorrow is the new moon. And um, 
And anyways, he says here, thou shalt be missed because thy seat will be empty. Well, what was going on? Well, there was a time, a, this was a feast day. New moons were feast days. And David, being that he was, you know, uh, close to the, um, to Jonathan and, and uh, part of the kingdom there, was to sit with King Saul during this feast, during the new moon feast. Let's move on. Let's skip on down to um, 1 Samuel 20, verse 24. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. Okay, so everybody got to, they sat down with the king and the king held a feast with his servants on new moon days. No, and another thing too, this, is, this would be a good day for David to hide and not be seen because during a new moon, it's pretty dark out there. Skip on down to 1 Samuel 20, verse 25, And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times. In other words, this was a reoccurring thing. As, as at other times means this was the practice. This is what was done on new moon days even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. It was a feast day. And uh, David wasn't there. So, so Saul knows something is going on here. Verse 26. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day. He didn't say anything. He didn't make a deal out of it. For he thought, something had, hath befallen him. Something hath befallen David. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. That's what uh, Saul was thinking. He was thinking that David, for some reason, is unclean. Well, I don't know whether he touched a dead body or uh, whatnot. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month. And if you look at this in the Hebrew, this is, this is better, this could be better translated as not the second day of the month, but the second day or second new moon day. That David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet neither yesterday nor nor today. Two, moon, two new moon days. This was a 30-day month. As well as I think at this time, all, all of the months were 30, day, 30 days long at this time because the, uh, I believe at this time, this is another topic for another time in this series, that the original calendar the original solar cycle as well as the lunar cycle were both 360 days each, um, timed out to be um, um, it, synchronized with each other. In other words, they wouldn't have to add a 13th month every uh, three years. All right. Here we go. The signs always come the night before. And there we have it. New moon day, there are two moon, um, this is what a 30 day month looks like again. With a new, a new moon day or a dark moon added on at the end of the month. And then, I got a little arrow pointing up there, that's where the 30th day would be from the prior month. And there you see that um, David would have missed out on this feast, this two day feast of the new moons. All right, now let's turn to, if you would, uh, turn to Numbers chapter 10, verse 1, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of the whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeying of the camps. Calling of the assembly. Now that happened uh, during emergencies and so forth, but also during the feast days as this is going to uh, say here. Verse 3, And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
Verse 4, And if they blow, but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. So this is organized. God always does things in an organized and precise manner. Verse 5, When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie in the east parts shall go forward. Now alarm with the trumpets would be short, sharp bursts rather than a prolonged burst. And that's, that's important because a prolonged burst is going to announce something different. When you blow an alarm the second time, verse 6, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But... Verse 7, but when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. So that you would do a prolonged blast um, and, not, and not sound an alarm. In other words, it would just be a straight blowing of the trumpet. Now, the con again, when the congregation is gathered together, that's for feast days. Um, and actually, let's just get to the verse. The verse will tell us here. Verse 8, And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. Verse 9, And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets. And that's actually in Joel chapter 2, by the way. And you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. All right, here's what we came here for. Verse 10. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and, solemn days, that's the solemn feast days, high holy days, and in the beginning of your months. What word is there? What word is used there? Kodesh. And in the new moon days. Shall you blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am Yahweh, your God. So they blew with the trumpets, you know, to celebrate. Hey, every month this happened. It's kind of fascinating that the first we kind of carry forth this tradition. Every first, I think it's every first Wednesday of the month. And I realize we're not going by the biblical calendar here. That um, it's, this, it's this way in Minnesota anyways. I believe it's across the entire nation. That they, that they blow the, uh, the sirens. The tornado sirens. To an, as a test and probably to announce that a new month has come. I don't know. Interesting. All right. Let us turn to Psalms 81, verse 1. And um, in, this, in, this, uh, in these verses we're going to read here, I think we're getting towards the end of our pre presentation here, or end of our study. And we're going to find out uh, in Psalms 81 here that the word Kodesh must... For, mean new moons for each month. In other words, these verses here are going to complete, along with many other verses, but these verses alone that we're going to read in Psalms 81 eliminate the possibility of a solar calendar. A solar-only calendar, I should say. Um, and here we go. Verse 1, Psalms 81, verse 1. Sing unt aloud unto our... Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. It's time of worship. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Here it is. Verse 3. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, just as Numbers 10 stated. Now check this out. In the time appointed... On our solemn feast day. Now, th this is important. They're supposed to blow up the trumpet in the new moon there, but also in the time appointed. 
Now the time appointed means something different than what appears on the surface. And this is so important. In the original Hebrew manuscripts, it should read like this. Psalms 81 verse 3, blow up the trumpet in the new moon during the full moon. Also, also during the full moon. On our solemn feast day. In other words, that, that would be during the time of Passover, the solemn feast day, as well as the Feast of Tabernacles. That there is always a full, this, this verse states here, there is always a full moon during those feast days. So what does that tell you? The lunar calendar, as far as months is concerned, is the only calendar that can work out. This seals it. Along with other places, I said last week sealed it. The word itself seals it. There is so much biblical evidence, overwhelming biblical evidence for a solely lunar calendar that in order to try to say that we are to go by, that all this is just mistranslations of the word Kodesh and that the Israelites really used a solar only calendar, that's taking away from the word of God, my friend. It's taken away from the Word of God. Um, again, the, the pagan Egyptian calendar was a solar-only calendar. Think about that. Um, the other verses that, that eliminate the possibility of a solar-only calendar, in other words, that the sun determines the months, is Psalms 104, verse 19, where the moon was appointed to determine the feasts, the Sabbaths, and the new moon days, as well as Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. But I always think that's fascinating that on those solemn feast days, when all the Israelites were gathered together, that God lit up the sky at night for them. Like, let's take for instance the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, when they're out there in their tents, the, the sky was lit up all night long. So the Israelites could probably stay up a little later, you know, when it's dark, talking to each other, fellowshipping. Um, if they have to get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom when they got all their tents there, they can see. You can see pretty good during a full moon. You're not going to stumble and fall on somebody else's tent. God does everything so natural. But with this sporadic solar-only calendar, this, this the moon is just... The moon would just be floating around there doing nothing, providing n no rhythm or rhyme for, for giving light to the Israelites during their, certain during their feast days. As Genesis chapter 1 declares, the moon should be for. Can you see the, um, the error now in the solar-only calendar? It's time we fix these things, get these things right. And go with God's natural calendar, the Creator's calendar. Rather than man's twisted up, garbled up uh, attempt at making his own calendar. Well, again, somebody, somebody might be thinking right now, well, how can you say that that word means the full moon? Now again, in order for the Passover to fall on um, a full moon all the time, each month has to start on the new moon because a full moon is 15 days after new moon day. Okay? But here's the definition here. From the Blue Letter Bible online, that word full moon in the Hebrew there is the word kase. Kase. And it means the full moon. Moon. That's, that's what the meaning of this word is. And if you got a paperback uh, strong concordance, you can look it up there as well and you'll find out that it means the full moon. That's it, my friends. From new moon to full moon. You see here, these are the set times in God's word. As this verse states here, Psalms 81 verse 4, For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. The new moons and the full moons, as part of God's timekeepers, are laws. 
They're part of God's law. So some of you people out there that are, uh, you know, a little bit ignorant, that calling people that uh, use the moon for their calendar as lunatics and come off trying to call me unlearned and stupid and all these kinds of things, you better wake up, my friend, and read the scriptures. Anybody can take verses in the Bible and say, oh, that's a mistranslation and make their own doctrine. Come on. There's too many places, along with nature as a witness, the creation, that document that the moon is used for uh, a set time that, that we can build off of for the Sabbaths, the feast days, and other days, and, and everything else in God's Word there. Well. What are new moon days? Let's sum this up. They are not work days. They are not Sabbaths. They are days of worship. They are feast days. And they began the new months. That's what new moon days are. As it is written, And it shall come to pass, that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come, to worship before me, saith the Lord. Isaiah 66, verse 23. And there you see the heavenly alignment there. That is the foundation of the Creator's calendar, right there. Well, that's it for today. Hey, don't miss any of these studies. We're going to keep building from that foundation. Again, the new moon. What? Why is Pastor Ben why is Pastor Ben repeating this all the time? Am I a moon worshiper? Heavens forbid. I just know I just want I should say I just know. I'm just doing my best to understand the timekeepers God has placed in the heavens. You know, man can change his calendar and they, they can pass laws to make new calendars and new calculations. But one thing man cannot do is reach up into the heavens and pull the moon or the sun out of its appointed position as, and even the stars, as God's timekeepers, my friends. Therefore, you have the uncorrupted calendar in the heavens all the time. You know, like I, I was talking to people earlier when I first started learning some of these things. I was like, you know, I want to figure out the Creator's calendar. I think I'm figuring it out. I think I'm catching on. And one person, a dear friend of mine, made the comment that well, it's lost. We're never going to figure it out. You're just never going to figure it out. And they quoted a verse that I was going to get to, which maybe I'll get to later, where it talks about the new moons and the Sabbaths which shall be forgotten. But guess what? During the end days, the last days, God's people shall remember these things. In fact, a remnant is supposed to always know these things. For there's always a remnant on this earth that know the deeper truths, uh, or the plain truths, I should say, of God's word that are, that, that are hidden from the majority. So it's not impossible to understand because they've been up in the heavens all along like Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 has stated. The sun, the moon, and the stars are God's timekeepers. Not only for the regular um, weekly, uh, not only for days and uh, weeks and months and the Sabbath days and so forth, but also for prophecy, for prophetic times. And that is one reason I'm really looking forward to doing this series of studies because I want to understand prophetic time, don't you? Don't you? I hope you do. Anyways, I'm so excited to keep plowing through this. And uh, we've just begun, my friends. And I hope you're excited as well. But anyways, do like what Christ said in Matthew chapter 4 when tempted of the devil. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So see that you uh, study it. See that you consume it. Digest it. Meditate upon it. So that you can be a Christian. 
Overcomer.